Hey guys, I'm Lindsay Kirikoff and welcome to my Just Right Flow. And for practice today, we're not gonna have our parts too hot or too cold, meaning we're not gonna move too fast or too slow. We're not gonna hold poses for too long or too short. We're just gonna find that nice middle ground. And in the vinyasa portion of the practice, we'll do that by holding poses uh, for about seven breaths when we're not flowing. And then when we get to the yin-like portion of the practice, we'll hold the poses for about two minutes. That way you leave feeling accomplished, like you put something into the practice, but without going a little bit too far over the edge. So you'll want a block for practice today and any other props that you might want to find a nice comfortable seat. Thanks for joining. So first, come into child's pose. Bring your big toes to touch and sink your hips towards your heels as best as you can and walk your arms out in front of you. And feel your forehead center press into the mat, not because you're pushing it, but because you're just releasing. And let your elbows fall to the mat. Ungrip your jaw, let your top and bottom teeth not touch. And then with me, take a nice long inhale breath, followed by a nice long exhale breath. Inhale again. Exhale out. Good. And just a few more breaths here. And I invite you to just release wherever you can. So ask yourself, where can I release? Where can I create space? And then come up onto your hands and onto your knees. And we're gonna make space with some cat and cows. So you're gonna inhale, lift your chest up towards the ceiling, lift your pelvis, your tailbone up, and then exhale, round your back and press the floor away and scoop your tailbone towards the backs of your knees, hold. Really press the back of your chest to the ceiling. Inhale up into cow. And exhale, arc again into cat where you're going to hold this. Feel your shoulder blades spread apart. And take one more breath here. Exhale, stay. Inhale, come into center. Good. Exhale, walk your hands a little bit more forward. Curl your toes and come into downward facing dog. In downward dog, walk your feet out so you, or your legs out. So you bend one knee and then you bend the other knee. Let's go side to side a couple times. And then we're gonna do a side stretch. So bring both of your heels back to normal so your legs are both doing the same thing. Turn both of your heels to the right. You might even get one of your heels to touch the ground. You might have to shorten your stance, but make sure to bend your knees a little bit and press your chest back to your legs. You can even spin up and open towards the left. You're just going for a side body stretch. And then go to the other side. And a lot of our yoga poses, just our whole practice is not a static practice. You're not gonna make one movement and then be in the version of the pose that you wanna be in. You may have to move around a little bit till you find that spot, till you feel what you can feel, till you can get that opening. So come back to center, downward facing dog with your knees slightly bent so that you can lift your tailbone to the ceiling. And then look forward, walk your hands to the front of your mat 
We're going to come into a standing splits using your blocks. So remember, we're just starting to warm up our body still. Nothing crazy. Keep your left foot down and lift your right leg up. We're going for a stretch in the back of your left leg, so your hamstrings. You can keep your chest forward. That might give you plenty of stretch. I feel that. Or start to hinge at your hips to lower your chest down. But don't push. Just right. So today's practice is finding just the right spot. We're holding our vinyasa poses for just the right amount of time. The yin-like poses for just the right amount of time. Not too much, not too little. And then switch, go to the other side. So this isn't a practice to overdo or to underdo. <laughs> You'll definitely leave here feeling like you spent some energy, but not too much that you're depleted, just enough that it gives you a little bit of energy, that all the hard work leaves you feeling a little bit more revived and restored. And then release, drop both feet down, move the blocks off to the side, and come into halfway lift so that your chest is forward. And then forward fold so that your head drops, your hands drop, just pause there for a moment and ask yourself again, where can I release? Good, bend your knees, let them be soft and roll up to standing. And once you're at the top, come into Urdhva Hastasana where you lift your arms high up overhead. Bring your palms to touch together overhead. And then your hands down at chest center. Good. Now before we go further, I want you to zip up your legs, bring your pelvis at neutral so you're not sticking your pelvis back or tucking it under, just nice and neutral there. Hug your core muscles in and back like you're trying to put on a tight pair of jeans. <laughs> Have your palms face forward and draw your shoulder blades onto your back. Bring your chin slightly in towards your throat so that your head is not jutting forward like you're texting, but you have a nice, long, vertical spinal column. Go ahead and close your eyes and take one breath here. Let it go out, exhale. Good, half salutation. Inhale, sweep your arms up and overhead. Exhale and forward fold all the way down. Halfway lift to inhale, lengthen out your back. Forward fold to exhale, release your head downward. And inhale, rise to standing, reach up tall. And bring your hands to chest center. That's going to be our rhythm for a little bit. Okay, inhale your arms up and overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Find that release at the bottom. Halfway lift, hands on shins, and bring your chest forward. And then drop your hand, step your right foot all the way back, and lower your knee. Good. Inhale your arms up, seven breaths. Good. As you hold this for today, turn your palms out, cross your wrists, that was breath three, and go up vertically as you move your hips forward. Two more breaths. Look up, go back. One more breath, inhale, exhale, drop your hands to the mat, plank pose. You're going to hold this plank for seven breaths. If it gets to be too much at any point, drop one knee or even drop both knees. Feel your fingertips grip the floor. So look at your fingertips. Make sure that they're white. Good. Breathe for two. One more breath, inhale, firm core, firm legs. Lower your knees to the mat, your chest to your mat, and your chin to the mat. And then snake up into a baby cobra where we're going to hold again. So keep your hands down. And with your hands, try to pull them back without moving them. And you'll automatically feel this forward press of your chest. Keep that. Firm your legs. Draw your chest upward. And two more breaths. Breathe in. 
breathe out. Oh, I got a foot cramp. <laughs> One more breath in. Whew. And then exhale, lower your chest. Use your knees to press towards a table and then downward facing dog. Good, breathe in here and breathe out. And then lift your right leg all the way up. Yeah, we're just gonna look forward, step your foot to your hands. It's just a transition, drop your back knee. Lift your arms up. So we're not gonna hold we're not gonna hold this uh, for seven breaths for every pose. We'll eventually get into a flow. Good, move your hips down, turn your palms out and cross your wrists. Turn your left hip flexor forward and press your front heel into the mat. Use that pressure of your front heel to lift your chest and to lean back. Two breaths. One more inhale. And then lower your hands down. Curl your back toes and step forward. Halfway lift, breathe in. And forward fold to breathe out. And inhale, rise to standing. Take a nice big stretch upward. And then hands down to chest center. Good. And do that again. Inhale your arms all the way up. Exhale and forward fold the whole way down. And halfway lift to lengthen your back. And step your left foot behind you. Drop your back knee to the floor. Inhale your arms up. Good, so a little bit differently for this round. Hold on to your thumbs. Bend your elbows. That was two breaths, good. Move your hips forward. And now pull your elbows apart from each other. Good, you'll feel your shoulders activate. Get a lot of feeling there. Now for the next two breaths, lift your chest and lean backward. Good, one more breath. Inhale here, just the inhale. And then exhale, drop your hands to the ground. Plank pose, last time holding plank. Embody as much stillness as you can. And find the just right amount of effort where you're not lasering through your eyes or death gripping through your hands, but you're strong and you're stable, yet there is a a flow of ease, a current of ease. Good, take one more breath here. And then lower your knees, lower your chest and chin for baby cobra. And then drop your hips. Well now into baby cobra pose, lift your chest upward. Got a little ahead of myself. And make sure that all five of your toenails are facing down. Pull your hands back. Draw your chest forward. Two more breaths. Make space around your neck. One more inhale. On your exhale, curl your toes, press up towards table, and back towards downward facing dog. Good. Inhale your left leg up, just stretch back, reach nice and far. Step your foot to your hands, lower your back knee, and sweep your arms up. Good, last time, do the other thumb on top. So grab your thumb, bend your elbows out. Now first, get your lower body really part of the pose. Hips go forward just a little. Press into both feet. Now pull against each thumb and bend your elbows a lot. Bring your arm bones back. Three, two, look back. And then hands down to the ground, curl your back toes, step forward. Halfway lift to lengthen out. Forward fold to release your head down. Inhale, rise to standing. And bring your hands down to chest center, good. We're gonna do two more rounds, picking up the pace, not holding the poses. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, forward fold. So the same breath cadence, halfway lift, inhale, lengthen. Step your right foot all the way back, lower your knee. Inhale one time, lift your arms. You can do anything you want with them. And then hands down to the ground, plank pose, where you hold for just an inhale. Lower your knees, chest and chin, exhale. 
Good. Baby cobra or cobra, where you straighten your arms more. And downward facing dog. Exhale. Right leg high. Inhale, breath. Step your foot to your hands, exhale, lower your knee. Inhale to sweep up, lean back, crescent moon. Exhale, hands down, step forward to the front. Halfway lift to lengthen. Forward fold to release. Inhale up to standing, Urdhva Hastasana. And bring your hands to chest center, breathe out. One more, inhale, sweep up, look back. Exhale to forward fold down. And halfway lift to lengthen. Left foot all the way back, lower your knee. Inhale up to crescent moon pose. Exhale your hands to the ground, plank pose. And breathe in first. Lower to the floor when you breathe out. And then cobra pose, baby cobra or upward dog and downward facing dog, breathe out. Here we go, left leg up, inhale, keep this pace. Step your foot forward, back knee down. Inhale to rise, lean back. Exhale, hands to the ground, step forward to the front. Halfway lift to lengthen. Forward fold to exhale. Inhale, rise to standing. Bring your hands to chest center and please close your eyes and be as still as you can. Three breaths. Good. Okay, we're gonna move on to other standing poses now. So inhale, lift your arms up. And bend your knees for Utkatasana, chair pose. Okay, sit lower than that. <laughs> nice. Talking to myself, but also talking to all of you. I'm sure we're, we are in this together. I've been teaching yoga for 12 years. I know all the little workarounds to not actually working as hard in the yoga poses. But rather than thinking about working hard or challenging, can, again, you just find that right amount of effort here. Good. Hold and breathe for three. Oh yeah, this is a seven breath pose, guys. For two. Good, one more breath here. Lift your chest forward. Forward fold, exhale. Fold over your legs, halfway lift, inhale to lengthen. And then set both feet back, come into a plank pose. Good, from plank pose, downward facing dog, lift your hips up and step your right foot to your right thumb, ground your back foot, warrior two. Inhale to rise, exhale, bend your knee, one. Good, two, turn your chest to the left wall. Turn your eyes over your front middle finger. Reach out from arm to arm. You have two more breaths. Breathe in. Breathe out. Stay low. Inhale. Good. Exhale. And straighten your front leg and reach back into a reverse warrior, but with your legs straight. Look at your top hand, follow that backward, and then treat Gonasana triangle pose. So bring your right hand to the block outside your foot or the floor, and reach your top arm upward and look to your top thumb. Good, breathe here and turn both eyes to your top hand. Nice, one more breath guys, reach out arm to arm. And then lower both hands down to the floor, step back to a plank pose again. Good. And this time lower your right knee and turn your right foot out like a kickstand so your back leg is straight and on the ground. Okay. Next option is to lift up your left foot and kick this massive plant that's in your room or 
bend your back knee, reach for your outer foot, and kick behind you. Good. For three, turn your eyes towards the ceiling. For two, good, one more breath, and that's your seven breaths. In this whole version of the pose, come out slowly and drop your hands down, downward facing dog. Nice. And then lift your left leg all the way up, back behind you, and step your left foot to your hands, exhale. Spin your back foot down, inhale up, warrior two. Exhale, bend your front knee, that's one. So once again on this side, turn your chest to the side wall, and then make sure that your front knee angles facing your middle toe. And bring your drishti over your front middle finger. Good. Two more breaths. Stay strong like a warrior and stay open and available. Good. Straighten your front leg and then reverse your warrior back. Lengthen through your side. And then use that to go to trikonasana, triangle. So bringing your hand outside of your foot to the block or floor. Top arm up to the ceiling. And then a few breaths as you rotate the right seam of your shirt to the ceiling. So there's a rotation that's happening through your spine. Two more breaths here. Keep your eyes steady. And then lower both hands down to the floor. Move the block if you have it. Step back to plank pose. Then drop your left knee to the ground. Kickstand your left foot out and come into the side plank variation. That's breath one. Or lift your right leg up. Hold that there. Or reach your right hand behind you. Go for the pinky edge of your foot. And then kick your foot back. Nice. Two more breaths, stay here, working on balance of your outer hips, and if you have your foot working on a chest opener, hip opener, slowly release, and come back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Breathe as you are. And step your right foot all the way to your hands and pause here have your front toes point forward lift your chest slightly and then draw your fingertips to a hover off the mat good and lift your arms all the way up now crescent lunge keep your legs low hands at chest center this is breath three you're in a prayer twist to the right feel free to drop your back knee for more support Good, now three more breaths, holding this twist. Hug your hips towards each other as you draw the right seam of your shirt up to the ceiling again to twist. Nice, one more breath, ringing out, resetting. And then lower your hands down to the ground. Step back into plank pose again. Nice. Drop your right knee like you did before. Turn out for a kickstand, just like you did before. We're gonna do something different though. Take your right toes and kind of angle them more up to your right hand. Good. Keep that and then lift your arm over like you're side bending, arcing your body. Second thing to do is now turn up to the ceiling and rotate like you're back bending. Oh. Hello, side body stretch. Press your pelvis upward for four, three. We're not going anywhere fast, guys. Keep expanding. One more breath through that. And then release. Whew, hands down. Downward facing dog. Breathe out your mouth if you like, just kind of cleanses your breath a little bit more. Any tension that's built up, you just let it go. And step your left foot all the way to your hands and pause and crescent lunge legs. Come onto your fingertips and lift your chest forward slightly. 
Now inhale, sweep your arms up vertically and let your hips draw down as you breathe. Breath two. Bring your hands to chest center and then lean over your front leg. Zip up your back leg. Prayer twist to the left where you have three more breaths. Keep a strong frame of your arms as you rotate and maybe even lift both of your eyes for that final breath. Good. Lower your hands down to the ground. Step back to plank pose. We've got some opening to do on the other side. And drop your left knee. Turn your left toes out like that kickstand side plank. But for this one, take your left toes a little bit more up to your fingers. Arc your body like you're trying to touch your mat with your right hand. Keep that arc and then roll up to the ceiling like you're back bending. Four. Three, press your pelvis up, lean back, look back, let your head drop, open your throat. One more breath, breathe in. Exhale, lower your hands to the ground. Downward facing dog. Good, and walk your hands all the way back to your feet. We've got a couple more standing poses. Halfway lift at the back of your mat. And forward fold, exhale. Rise up to standing. Inhale, breath. And bring your hands down to chest center. Ground your feet. Stand on your left foot. Lift your right knee up to your navel. Hands at Anjali Mudra still. And you're going to take a big step to the front of your mat. And then ground your back foot. Turn your toes out. Good. Just a different way of moving your body. Different way to transition. Bring your arms out. Hinge at your hips into Prasarata Padottanasana. And let your head fall down and drop. Awesome. And then halfway lift to lengthen your spine. And we're going to do a twist. So right hand to the floor or block. Left arm's going to come up as you turn. Good. Breathe for three. Ooh, I went a little too fast. Now you're going to breathe for three. Yeah. Good. Reach out wrist to wrist as you rotate. One more breath here, everyone. And then release mindfully. So no snapping out. Take your time. Other side. Left hand is down. Lengthen your back. And then turn to the right to twist. Now evenly press into both feet. That'll keep both legs active. And as you twist, hug your core muscles in and rotate by using your core. Good. Two more breaths. Rotate from your neck as well. And then lower both hands down to the mat. Walk your hands back a little bit and come all the way up to standing. Good. Goddess pose. Turn your toes out. We've held this for like 10 breaths before. You can do seven. Totally. Okay. Heels in. Get low first. The setup is not part of the breaths for this one. Okay. Set up. Here we go. Arms up. Breathe in. Goal post. Arms breathe out. Nice. Hold and breathe. You can keep your palms open. It's just like a mudra of hand gesture of receiving reception. You can even kind of cup your hands like as if you're receiving the goodness, the abundance, or the answers to your questions. It sounds very yogic and could sound a little bit weird. However, if you just practice being receptive, you might be surprised at what comes your way. And one more breath. And slowly stand all the way up. Good. You're going to turn to the front of your mat and come into a pyramid pose. So back foot's going to come forward. Widen your stance and bring your hands to your hips. Good. Press your right hip back. Start to fold over the right leg, but do bend the right knee if it's too much. And your hands can come to blocks to fold your chest over your thigh. Remember, we're going for just right. So if it's painful, you've probably gone too far. <laughs> 
And if it feels like not quite enough, feel free to lengthen your stance. Step your back foot a little further back to get more stretch. Good. Two more breaths. Nice. Halfway lift. And now step back into a plank pose. And just for one breath, breathe in. Downward facing dog. We'll get ready to do the other side. So walk your hands back to your feet. Try to lift your hands. Don't slide them. Halfway lift at the back of your mat. Forward fold and exhale. And then rise up to standing. Inhale breath. Reach big. And bring your hands down to your chest center. Good. So bring all of your weight into your right foot. Lift your left knee up with your hands at Anjali Mudra. Good. Stay tall. And then look forward. Bend your bottom knee and step and land as softly as you can. Turn to the right side of your mat. Five-pointed star. So the points are your two feet, your two hands, and your head. Reach out through all five points. And then hinge at your hips to forward fold all the way down to the mat. And for this one, you're just going to stay for seven more breaths. Feel your jaw ungrip. If you want, turn your fingers facing between your feet and try to walk your hands underneath and then pull using your fingers, using your palms. Pull yourself under your legs. Cirque du Soleil yoga. <laughs> and then come into halfway lift. So walk your hands back and then take your time all the way up to standing. Okay, we're gonna go to your goddess pose again. So toes out, heels in, sink low. Good. And then inhale your arms up vertically as I fall backward and then exhale into goalpost arms. Feeling receptive and open or if you wanna push things away, turn your palms out. Press anything away that might feel negative or unserving or a thought process or an emotion of sorts. But claim your space. Breathe here in your power. Three. Two. Last breath. And then stand up slow, slow, slow. Good. And turn your left toes forward. Pyramid pose. So you're going to have to widen your feet and then Hinge at your hips, left hip especially is gonna go back. Let your hands drop down onto something and release the weight of your head and neck. One. Feel your feet. You have one more breath. Halfway lift. Blocks to the side. Step back to plank pose. One final plank for seven breaths. Press away from the floor. And hug your core back to your navel and pick a point for your eyes in front of your mat. Just a little bit in front to keep your neck long. Good. Keep holding for three. Press up and out of your armpits. One more breath. And then lower your knees and walk your hands back so you can sit onto your heels. Vajrasana. Okay. Two minute holds, which means that we don't have a lot of poses to do. We're gonna come into a toe squat first. So curl your toes under. Knees can be about hip distance apart, so just a few inches away from each other. 
and make sure you get your pinky toes under. So kind of grab them, give them a little bit of movement so that they curl too. If your hips don't touch your heels, find your blanket or a pillow or a block and sit back onto that. You don't want your hips to float. That's just gonna go right into your knee joints. We've already been here for 30 seconds. And also, you might already feel an intense sensation in your feet if that's the case. Just lean forward. Don't uncurl your toes. You want to try to keep them curled under. Just lean forward to take off the pressure and then come back whenever you're ready. If you're not quite feeling much, you can kind of press your toes into the mat like you're trying to flick your feet back. Your toes won't move, but you might feel an extra, extra sensation. Good, 45 seconds. I'll be silent in just a moment, but I also wanna say that if you have kind of bummed toes or hurt toes, and know this isn't okay for you, just point your feet and sit onto your heels. Soften your jaw, take breaks when you need, and be as still as you can. And two more breaths. Nice. Okay, come forward, don't spring out of this. Come forward onto your hands. One foot at a time, point your toes. It's gonna feel a little weird. And then sit back onto your heels for an ankle stretch. Now you can stay there. If your hips are on your heels, you might even wanna bring your hands back or even lift your knees up and you'll get more of a stretch across the front of your ankles. We won't be here for two minutes. It's just a counter stretch. So one more breath. Good. Come on out. And then into downward facing dog. And feel free to pedal out your legs. That might help bring some normalcy back into your feet. Okay, step your right foot to your hands. Turn to the left side of your mat into a wide-legged fold. We're going for a two-minute frog pose. It's not gonna start time yet, but if you know where you're going, go ahead. You're gonna walk your hands forward so you can drop onto the insides of your knees. And then if you look over each shoulder, you want your ankles right behind your knees and your feet pointing to the front and back of your mat which means that your inner arches are gonna be on the floor. And this is a pretty big inner groin stretch, inner hip stretch. But you do wanna walk your legs out as far as possible. That way it's just gonna be a little bit more comfortable on your knee joint. If you have a block, you can put it underneath your chest. That way your chest can fall onto the block. Your shoulders don't have to hold you up. I like placing my forehead onto my arms. Just do what you can to settle in here. You have a little less than a minute. And if you want to come out, I recommend staying one breath longer first. Unless you're coming out because something isn't sincere pain. <laughs> That's a different story. But if it's just general discomfort or see if you can just stay one breath longer. That way we train our minds not to be in reaction, but instead to consciously act. Okay, 
Now, my favorite way to come out of this is to actually slide forward onto your stomach. I might go off screen and then slide your legs back and then sweep your legs around. Nice, good. And then you're gonna sweep your legs around fully. We're gonna come into one more downward facing or two more downward facing dogs. Not a two minute hold. <laughs> But you're going to find half pigeon on either side. So right shin forward to the front of your mat. Stretch your left leg back behind you and lower onto the ground. And let your chest fall, but especially your forehead center fall onto something. So your forehead center to your arms, to the floor, to a blanket or bolster. And drum your fingers out so that you know that they're at ease, they're ungripping. And in these poses as well, you want to find that just right depth. So if you are feeling too much, like you've gone over the, the edge of just right, you can come up onto your hands. That'll change the feeling or come onto your forearms. You could even put a block under your right hip. And for the last 30 seconds, I'll be silent. And you feel what you feel and breathe. One more breath. And lift your chest. And here's our final downward dog. Okay, left shin forward to the front of your mat for your half pigeon pose. And as you're setting up, turn your right thigh inward so that all five of your right toes angle down. Your toenails face the mat. And our lefts and our rights are not quite equal. <laughs> the right side of our body has experienced different things than the left side of our body just from from injuries or from habits or from the way we were born. To find the just right depth for this side. See what you can let go of. I like to think of our yoga practice as an opportunity to unlock, to release, to remove the blocks, and to surrender. So if there's anything that you're consciously carrying in your mind or even in your body, See if you can unlock that. Let that roll off you. No need to carry around all the extra emotional, mental weight. Three more breaths. Good. And then lift your chest up, walk your hands back and just roll onto your right hip. Bring both of your legs out in front of you. And I'm going to give you a choice before we close. The choice is to either fold forward into Paschimottanasana, 
both your legs out for two minutes or you can bring your legs wide into a V and go forward like that for two minutes. Okay. So the choice is yours. Uh, your legs going wide into a V will get more of your hamstrings and inner hip and just going straight over both legs will focus on just your hamstrings for the most part. And as you stay here, see if you can do less like pulling, not as much like trying to make yourself go, go deeper, but instead use your exhale to release and let go. And by removing those blocks with your breath, let that take you downward. And perhaps you might want to place a block underneath your forehead center if that is low enough. It just lets your head to release. Two more breaths. Good, and then start to lift your head and chest all the way up, no matter where your legs are. Okay, and come to face the front of your mat, and you're gonna find a two minute seated position. So we're gonna end before Shavasana, end with the meditation, just a quiet seat. So you can sit with your legs crossed or like I'm gonna do, sit onto my shins. And I recommend sitting on something. So just grab a prop, something to bolster your hips higher than your knees. And bring your hands down to your thighs. And sit up nice and tall so that you feel your spine over top of your hips, not leaning forward or not leaning back, but just nice and vertical. Do the same with your neck so that your chin isn't jutting forward or lifting up too high, but your head is in a nice neutral position. And if you'd like, keep your palms facing down. It's a gesture of grounding or feel free to turn your palms up as a gesture of reception, receiving, being available. And bring your focus between your eyebrows. to the point and towards the center of your forehead. And for the next 45 seconds, keep your attention to that point between your eyebrows as much as possible. You may find it's easy for your attention and your mind to go elsewhere. When you notice that, just bring it right back to that place between your eyebrows. Feel free to stay here in this seated meditation or come on to your back for Shavasana. And 
where we'll be for the last two minutes in seated or reclined on your back. Keep your body still, and your breath at ease. And just let it all go. If you are on your back in Shavasana, just take one more breath here. And then start to roll to your right side in the fetal position. And let's all meet up into a seated position. And bring your hands to the floor next to you. And sweep your arms up overhead like you're gathering in your whole practice to your hands and pull it down to chest center so that you can take it with you. And bring your thumbs to your forehead center and draw your chin to your chest as a gesture of acknowledgement. With respect, acknowledge yourself for being here today. Wonderful work, you guys. Great job. You can open your eyes. Thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate that. I hope you feel great the rest of your day. Let me know if you have any questions about this class or in general about yoga. I'm happy to help. Thank you.